the point where I would get sick of it, right? Then I have to tell my dad to tell my ama to like, hey, ama, I need to like stop for a while. Yeah. So so yeah, it's always been that kind of relationship. Um. So ever since she passed on, I felt like I was getting to pick up threads, like traces that sort of connected me to my dad and then to her, and. So this came from gardening. Like a few days ago, I went to her house, her old house, and I found like pots and garden soil. And I couldn't remember that she grew things. But then, hey, I'm growing things now. So suddenly, it seemed like there was a connection. And then there's Xiao Hui. So Xiao Hui to me is more than an edible, edible weed. Yeah. So I started wanting to like delve into it. So um, anyway, I only know the name, right? So I went to Google, and Google gave me nothing. There was nothing about Xiao Hui, uh, and and then of course I turned to the wonderful world of Facebook, and I went to Foodscape Collective page as well as Urban Farmers, and I asked, right? I asked people for help. I wanted like I needed the help of like all the ex Kampong dwellers, anyone who stayed in Kampong before. Do you know Xiao Hui, right? So I wrote my story, and I got and I asked. And many people replied, um, but across the board, the number one vegetable that they um, suggested to me was mani thai. Uh, so maybe some of you are familiar with mani thai, but is is this um, plant that people use to uh, often cook with mi hung kui, this Chinese dish? Um, in my mind, I sort of knew that it wasn't. Uh, Anyway, I chose a photo that someone posted and I went to find my dad, right? So I ran to my dad, I asked him if this was the No no, it's not. I was quite surprised and appalled by his judgment because my dad doesn't really cook, uh, not at home. And he doesn't really go to the market often as well. So to me, it was like, hey, how do you know that this is not the actual Thai, not the actual plant, right? But when I think about it, um, if he grew up with it and he grew up foraging this particular vegetable, he's bound to know it better than anyone. Yeah, so that's all right. I went back to Facebook. I told everyone, hey, sorry, it's not money Thai. Um, you know, it's something else. And this really got everyone on their toes. They were like, oh, it's not money Thai, then what is it? Because everyone was so certain, you know, they were like, this has to be money Thai, but it's not. So everyone was very excited. They were like on this search for this mysterious plant. Um, day after day, people commented, my phone kind of got crazy. And um, after a couple of days, uh, I continued to show him all these different herbs and different plants that people were suggesting. None of it was was that. So after a week or so, the thread finally died down. Um, and part of me was like, oh no, maybe I can't really find this um, plant anymore. But one morning, my phone suddenly rang. Um, and a lady commented that she found Xiao Hui. She found a plant. And immediately I texted her, right? I was like, hey, where do you find this? And she was saying that she found it at Chongpang Market. So in Yishun. And so in Hokkien, it's known as Jiao Hui, but in Chinese, it's known as Ma Shi Xian. So Ma is like the Ma, the horse. Shi is like poop, like, yeah, poop. Uh, and then Xian is uh, the one with the Cao Zi to and the Jian. So that's the Chinese name. And I Googled, and there were some Chinese articles talking about this weed. Um, in English, it's known as Wild Amaranth. But it's not so common. Like people didn't post about it, and people didn't really talk about it. Uh, and and there's a lot of like confusion with like purslin, but it's not the same. It's a type of MRF. Yeah. So she sent me a photo on the thread um, of the plant, and asked me to verify with my dad. Right. So I jumped up. I ran to my dad, and I was like, "Hey, daddy, daddy, is it this?" And he looked at it, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it looks like it." And he smiled. And he asked me where I found it. Uh, but he didn't comment further. So when I told him it was Facebook, he just smiled and, and, he, didn't com and he didn't say much after that. Um, but I could sense that there was some like, happiness in him. 
to be able to know that they still exist and people know about it. So while he was being sitting there, like being quite quite calm and all that, I was not. I was jumping around. I was very happy. Uh, so I went back to Facebook and announced to everyone, you know, guys, the mystery has been like solved, you know. We found the Thai. We found the plant. It's called Jiao Hui and can be found at Chompang Market, right? So um, after speaking further to the lady that found it, she told me that um, the store owner rarely sells it. Um, so it's not like commonly found. It's only this particular store that had it. Um, and and she, the store owner couldn't really tell her like when, when it would come. So, um, and often people don't really know what is it. So it's always like just with the other vegetables. So the lady then offered to buy some for me. But of course I politely declined. I didn't want to trouble her. Um, so, but after a few days later, she commented again, just to tell me that, hey, she bought it. She bought three bunches of it for me, um, just in case I wanted them and just in case it was out of stock. So she was actually halfway across Singapore, but it didn't really matter to me. Uh, I, I, I arranged a time and date with her and I just went down to pick it up. That night when I got home, I threw down my bag. I ran to my dad uh, with the bag of vegetables, right? And I was like, Daddy, Daddy, I got it. Uh, he, was sitting at the so he was sitting on the sofa watching TV. And I swear at that moment, he got up so quickly. He grabbed the bag and he opened it so quickly, all in one breath. And when he saw the vegetable, immediately, without hesitation, he said, you know, like, this is the one, this is Jiao Hui. I can't really explain to you in words uh, what the feeling was, but it was priceless. He handed over the bag to me and he announced to the whole family that tomorrow we're going to have Mi Hun Kui for dinner and we're going to make it from scratch. Uh, my dad rarely cooks dinner, okay, so this was a big thing. At 4 p.m. the next day, he walked into the kitchen, he got a big bowl and I asked him, how much flour do we need? Uh, he didn't reply me, he just walked to the sink and he started like pouring flour and adding water to it. There was no scales, no cups, no measurements, he didn't need any of that. So it was all based on tactile memory, even though it was so many years, he could still remember what it's supposed to feel like. So after mixing the dough together, he started you know, kneading away. He started kneading and pounding the dough. At the first few needs, um, he actually frowned and he sort of mumbled that, hey, you know, like, it's been so long, like, I don't know whether I can still do it. But after a few minutes, he started getting his groove, he started finding the rhythm and I could see the whole dough coming together and with his hands coated in flour he just said you know it's just like that it's very easy very simple so i left them to do like the whole mi hun kui thing and i left the kitchen and when i came back he was still kneading away with his eyes with his eyes on the dough and hands working at it he just said you know this is so fun, like, I, it's been a long while since I had so much fun. And as he kneaded the dough, he just said it a couple more times. Not to my mom, not to me, but just to himself. So, at that moment, I sort of felt like we were transported back in time. I felt like I was back in the kampong with him, even though I wasn't born. Um, with my ama and him making me hung kui. And I, I could see that he ran out to out of his house. I could picture him like foraging the jiao hui, right? And then running back to, to the house and cooking it in the soup. The entire memory and the other, entire picture was very nostalgic. It was very romantic and it was very beautiful. So after that day, I wondered like how many more plants are out there that are almost lost or not yet to be found. I wondered what other edible plants grew in the kampong and whether they still existed today. Xiao Hui was an edible weed back then, 
But today is much more than that. It was lost, but it was found. And I think this is very important because this vegetable is much more than just a green, right? Just much more than just a foraged um, wheat. Um, it actually holds meaning, it holds memories, and important stories that, you know, is more than what history textbooks can teach us. It provides us with a sense of connection, a deep-seated resonance with our past, our present, and our future. So why future? So I believe many of us here, we are very interested in food sustainability and growing our own food um, in our gardens. So I do as well. I have a corridor garden. Uh, I mean, I have a garden in my corridor. Um, with space as a limitation, I often need to think about what I want to grow. When I heard and learned about Xiao Hui, uh, of course, inevitably, I decided that I really wanted to grow Xiao Hui. So when the lady gave me the bunch of Xiao Hui, thankfully, there were some that still had their roots intact. And I managed to use them. So I, I got it in the pot. I threw it in and for the rest that were rotting, I used it as mulch. And I just left it there. And I prayed and prayed and prayed that it would grow. Uh, after all, back then, it grew everywhere, right? So it's supposed to be quite a hardy plant. Um, supposed to grow everywhere. Uh, and after a couple of days, I would like to present to you my lovely Xiao Hui. <laughs> so it's quite small right now. You might not be able to see it, but uh, this one is flowering already. Yeah. So I managed to salvage this little pot and um, I'm really hoping that it will grow, grow well. Uh, yeah. And I really thank Mother Nature for allowing me to be able to grow this special plant in my garden. So the point of today's talk is that, um, you know, in this, right now, in this moment, we are at quite a pivotal moment in history, right? With this pandemic and all, um, people are worried about food and many people are growing their own food. But what exactly are we growing? Um, it got me thinking that, you know, rather than growing things that are perhaps not that acclimatized to our climate, things like kale, cabbage, that, you know, might be a bit difficult to grow. Um, perhaps we should look at growing vegetables and plants that are native to Singapore. So when we talk about food memories, we, you know, food is the thing that we eat, but it's also more than that. Um, memories, you know, when we eat food, we often associate it with certain memories. Uh, and I think these memories are important because they connect us to the past, right? So. What I want to drive across today is that there's value in finding and keeping record of the different plants that our parents, our grandparents, or even we ourselves uh, forage and eat. So maybe all, not all of us forage, right? Um, perhaps we don't do that in Singapore. But maybe in the past, there are certain plants that have, that like, like my dad's story, grew everywhere in the kampong. Uh, how many such plants are there out there? And... And do they still exist? Do, are there still seeds that we can find? And if there are, how can we help and contribute to grow more of it? Yeah. So um, I think the memories is really important because by having local food that is uh, native to our, well, not exactly native, but that, that our ancestors used to grow, it also forms like our identity as well. Yeah. So... With that, um, I've come to the end of my sharing, but I have one question for everyone else, well, all of you here, to just like pause and think about. So I would like everyone to think whether there are any vegetables or plants that your family used to eat. Um, it's perhaps not commonly found today. Um, this question is not easy to answer because it, it involves like investigation, right? Like going into to talk, like going to talk to your parents, your grandparents and all that. But I think that this is like good information to keep and it would be awesome if the collective is able to just compile all of this knowledge together and it will be a step forward in food sustainability as well.